What's going on everyone? My name is Jake with Code 4 Defense and today we're here on the range taking a look at the High Point YC9 Yeet Cannon. Like I said, we're taking a look at the High Point YC9 Yeet Cannon. Hide your kids, hide your wife. This thing is rough. The first thing that I noticed when I picked up the High Point was, holy f this thing is a huge piece of And I brought it out to the range and I shot it. And you know, this is the first High Point that I've ever owned. So I didn't have a ton of, oh, I don't know, experience with High Points. Um, like probably all of y'all, I saw this thing, you know, five years ago, three years ago. I don't even know when they announced it. And I knew that I was going to buy one the moment that it came out. Only for the memes, obviously. Um, so once I got it to the range and started shooting it, I have to say that something magic happened. This thing is so much fun to shoot. It's ridiculous. I, I, I hate that I like shooting this thing so much, but I do. And I love the fact that everything that I've put on this gun costs more than three times the gun itself. It just brings so much joy to my heart. I can't really even describe it for you. So let's go front to back, working top to bottom, just like we always do on the old High Point YC9 while I play some shooting footage for you. Starting here at the front, it's got a threaded barrel, or excuse me, a threaded muzzle for half by 28 uh, suppressors. Like I said, threaded for half by 28 suppressors. They thread on very nice. I never had one walk off or anything like that. I used my Silencer Co. Octane 45 2.0 as long as, as well as my uh, CGS Group Mod 9 SK, and uh, both of them performed flawlessly. The funny thing is, uh, just a side note with this, this is a fixed barrel, and so you would think that a Nielsen device would cause the gun to malfunction, but this suppressor by CGS Group has a Nielsen device with a spring piston in it, and it works just fine on this. My Silencer Co. Octane 45 is set up for fixed barrel submachine guns, and it has a fixed barrel stress in it. Both of them function flawlessly on the gun. Like I said, both function flawlessly on the gun. And, um, you know, this one, as you can see, it's got the spring Nielsen device, and it works just fine with it. So I don't really know why that is. Uh, you would think with a fixed barrel gun, a Nielsen device would cause it to jam, but it doesn't. So here we are. Uh, moving back, you've got this rear sight, which is just kind of a painted notch, and it mates up with the red um, rear sight that comes along with the gun. It's plastic and metal, it screws into the top of the gun. Obviously, I installed the pick rail adapter, which we'll kind of talk about in a minute, but um, you come back here, you can install a pick rail adapter as well as an armor footprint adapter and the standard front sight. So kind of what you got going on there. Uh, moving forward a little bit, you can see it's got front and rear tracking stations and, you know, they allow you to get a really good purchase on the gun function just as you would think that they would. Um, the chamber right there has a loaded chamber indicator by way of just a direct window into the breech. And that seems to be the most popular way that companies are doing that these days. As you come back, again, reiterations work really well. You can see the gun is loaded because the, um, because the back firing pin sticks out. And then when the gun is fired, obviously I've got a chamber flag in there. Um, that goes forward and, uh, you know, the gun's fired. On this side of the handgun, you can see that it's got a safety lever. Um, so that just goes right up, prevents the slide from being able to be uh, racked so you can't see a round and it also prevents the trigger from being pulled as well. Come back even further and it's got a palm swell safety or grip safety. So when this is not depressed, you can't, can't pull the trigger and when it is depressed, you can. Um, as you come forward, you've got a pick rail for mounting your Picatinny rail style um, optics, and, or excuse me, not optics, but lights, lasers, that thing like that. I've got a Mod Light PL350 on there because I just thought it fit nicely. And again, I'll talk about it in a minute, but it's the only light that I could actually get to fit. Uh, coming back here, you've got the um, 
texturized grips with the high point style logo on them. I don't know if these are interchangeable with any of the other grips, but it's got screws on either side that you can take the grip panels off and change them out. That said, the grip texture on it is really nice and the overall grip, like when I first picked it up, I was like, oh man, this feels cheap. It feels like um, I don't really know if I like it, but now I don't know why it's really grown on me and the, like the styling of the grip really works well too. I don't quite know why, but it, it just feels really good in your hand for such a, like, this is a really big gun. I mean, there's no two ways about that. And when you bring it up, you know, to fire it, it works really nicely in my hand. The, the grip angle feels good. The, the grip itself feels good. It's got some rubber texture here along the back. I don't know if that adds anything, but it feels good on the palm swell of my hand. Um, so all of that feels really well. You've got your magazine release here and it um, drops the magazine free. Like I said, I've got the uh, loaded chamber right there that prevents rounds from being loaded into this thing. Um, just a blank fire adapter, but holds 10 rounds in this magazine. Um, and it is probably one of the jankier piece of shit magazines that I've ever handled in my firearms career, but it's worked flawlessly for me. So I don't really know what to say. Um, 10 round capacity, They're talking. a single stack into a double stack design type thing. I'm sure at some point they'll come out with a fake mag that sticks out you know, just a little bit further down. And to be quite frank, that would be a really nice addition if they came out with a 15 round mag style thing. Um, little pinky adapter thing there on the bottom of the magazine so that you can get a full purchase on the handgun. And that's really it. Um, the Yeet Cannon, obviously, you know, is going to go down in meme lore forever because of the way in which it was marketed. If you're not aware, they did a internet contest to decide the um, to decide the the name of the Yeet Cannon, and that's what the people wanted. That's what High Point went with, and it you know put the hype to a thousand. People were super excited to get this gun, and then it just never came out. Finally, this year, a couple weeks ago, it did. Obviously, I had to buy one uh, to get into the shop to make some holsters for. Now, that brings me to my next point, which is I have zero relationship with High Point whatsoever. Our company purchased this handgun to make Kydex holsters for. That's what we do. And um, it's a fun range toy to bring to the range. And, you know, it's fun when you're running your $3,000 rifle to transition to a $200 pistol. I think that just, it just makes me smile for whatever right? reason. Um, so we'll kind of go over what I think of the Yeet Cannon. Um, I fired about 500 rounds through this thing so far. I've taken it on the range uh, basically every time I've come out over the last three months and, or over the last three weeks. And it's performed flawlessly for me. That entire time, it only had one malfunction and I'm not 100% sure it was a failure to feed. And I don't know if it was an issue with the magazine or if it was an issue with the user. I handed it to a new individual who'd never fired the gun before and uh, within two shots it malfunctioned. So I don't know if that was user error or if that was gun error, but every time that I shot it, it functioned flawlessly and um, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. So, you know, you look at the price point of this thing, I paid, I think, I think we paid like $220 for it or something like that. Um, so for the price for the market, $220 on paper sounds really good, but there's some things that kind of annoy me about what did or didn't come with this gun. First, it should come with all these optic plates from the factory for that price point. If it was sub 200, I would say no, but you're buying this $220 gun, you spend 50 bucks more and you can get something like a Taurus G2C that's actually a legit gun that I would, well, I wouldn't carry it, but people do legitimately carry and probably for decent reason. But with this one, you know, you're paying, I don't know, 220 bucks, and then you have to buy the pick rail adapter or the IRMR adapter, which is another $20. It only comes with one magazine. I, I guess in my opinion, if High Point was gonna sell these for the $220 price point, it would blow it out of the water if it came with the mounting solutions and a second magazine. Then it would be a dynamite deal in my opinion. If it was sub $200 for this thing without those, maybe that might be worth it but the fact of the matter is you know regardless of the fact that this thing functions flawlessly for me and i haven't cleaned it once i would never carry this legitimately like i would never count my life on this gun so really for me it's always going to be the meme range toy and let me tell you it is awesome for that i mean shooting the gun with 12 you know 12 or 1500 dollars worth of accessories on it 
just, again, makes me smile in a way that I didn't think was possible. But it, in and of itself, is not a gun that I would trust, you know, with my life. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, if I'm gonna buy a gun just for the range memes, then I feel like I should get a little bit more for that $220 price point. Otherwise, I don't think I would spend more than $200, if that makes sense to you. The other thing that really bugged me about this is, and I kind of hinted at it, was I chose to put the Mod Light PL350 on this thing simply for the fact that it was the only light that I could get to fit on it. And I had to file the pick rail down so that this could even fit onto it. So I had to, <laughs> I actually took my Dremel, sanded the pick rail down so that this could seat properly into the, into the rail space up here and bite on. And if you look closely, the light's canted because the serial number on the frame sits in this portion of the pick rail. And I couldn't file that down to get the light fixed. I didn't want to become a felon, you know, in the 20 seconds it took me to get this thing to fit. So you can see it's canted because of where the serial number is. I can't file that down to get a proper fit with the pick rail. You can't put a Surefire X300 Ultra on it. You can't put a TLR1 without some kind of key adapter. I don't actually know what lights you can put on this, to be honest, because my TLR7 wouldn't fit on it. Um, this legitimately was the only light that I could get to fit on this pick rail. And true high point fashion, why the f wouldn't you make a gun that, you know, the whole like the whole thing behind this project was to bring high point into the modern world. Pick rails, light accessory rails are like one of these staples of modern handguns, and they didn't even get that right. It, it just blows my mind, to be quite frank with you. All of that said, would I buy this gun? If I had $220 laying around and I had all, right, all the other guns that I wanted <laughs> in my collection, I would absolutely buy this gun for the fun. Yourself, it, I really can't describe yeah, enough how much fun this thing was. Recoil is basically non-existent. The um, cycling on it is a lot of fun. I haven't ghosted a trigger for you, so we'll do that. But um, right here is the take up. And as you can tell, like really no take up. Two millimeters of travel. Brakes, reset, that's the reset, and then, oh, sorry. That's the reset, and then it breaks again. Um, so the trigger isn't terrible. It's a longer trigger than I was used to, so a lot of times I'd be firing quick, and then I would like stutter because I didn't let the trigger out far enough to reset to be able to press the next round. Um, so, you know, all in all, to be quite frank, the gun is a lot of fun to shoot. You can actually run it pretty hard if you get used to the trigger reset. And it functioned, like functionally, it worked 100% for me. Other than that one time, which again, I'm actually going to attribute to user error because it was the very first time that he ever fired it. And I haven't had that issue one more time. So I guess maybe one malfunction in 500 will call it. Other than that, um, yeah, I don't know. It, Every time I shoot it, I like it more, and that bugs me that I do, if that makes sense. So um, I guess with all of that said, if you decide to pick yourself up a Yeet Cannon and you want to go full Yeet out on the range, check our website out. We sell the um, holsters for them. Otherwise, obviously, wherever you can find them, again, I'm not affiliated with High Point in any way. Wherever you can find them, if you can find it for sub 200 bucks, that would be my opinion. I think it's probably a good steal at that point, but otherwise, maybe, do some research on some other things. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. My name's Jake with Code 4 Defense. You guys be safe and we'll see you on the next one.